So how do you get from this to this? Well, if you've watched our previous videos, you'll know that we had to remove our teak cap rail so that we could fix what turned out to be a quite badly damaged hull to deck joint. As you can see from what I'm holding here, a lot of the teak rail itself was quite badly damaged. So come back in time with us one last time and we'll take you through this part of our refit story about how we either restored this teak rail or replaced sections of it by building them completely from scratch. As always, we hope you learn a thing or two and most importantly, that you enjoy the show. This is Brilliant 2, a Kelly Peterson 44 built in 1978. This is us, the Smallwoods. And this is the story of our long overdue boat refit. Welcome along for the ride. I'm going to give the cap rail a bit of a sand and see what sort of uh, condition it's in after it's been underneath that aluminium track for 45 years. A few moments later. Some of it's pretty good, some of it's not so good. This teak is not looking very healthy under there at all. Split all the way along. Anyway, I think this piece is going to have to be replaced. First thing I've got to do is get the screws which are underneath these plugs here. There's one every six inches. You just alternate from one side to the other. The easiest way to do that is to get the plugs out and do the screws. Here's one. Sometimes they come out easy like that. Other times you have to chisel them out. These old boats, they're all slotted head as well. So you just make the head as clear as you can. Usually there's some resin stuck in the slot. Get rid of that. Now that's a bit ominous. I hit the top of that screw and the screw actually went in. It's not supposed to do that. That means there's probably rotted in there. So there's the first screw. Um, wouldn't screw out, I basically just pulled it out. So we'll see what uh, surprises the next one's got for us. People wonder why this stuff takes so long. decided that we've got to take the whole cap rail off, that's like 100 feet. I'm going to do it in stages. Uh, I've just loosened up this one, taken the screws out, and we're going to lever it up. Sometimes the plugs come out in one piece, which is nice. Other times they don't. Anyway, it starts them off. Then I'll get the rest with a chisel. These screws are the source of leaks down the bulwarks and into the inside of the hull. One of the many sources of leaks. So I'm removing them all. Another one gone. And our next bit's my favourite bit. All the fasteners are out. Now I'm going to use brute force to get the cap rail off of the deck without breaking it. This bit's cracked off before, so I won't be surprised if it breaks again. I'll just glue it on if it does. I'm not buying more and more tea. It costs a fortune. All that's holding this on is the old sealant, and it's uh, about the consistency of chewing gum. The tea's pretty old, and there's a few cracks in it. This bit broke off, but I'll be able to fix that. Oh, it's coming off. This is it. I've got the other end tied off so it doesn't fall in the sea. Oh, there we go. So this one goes home, be cleaned up and reused. Job today 
is refurbishing this teak cat rail given the cost of teak and the work involved in making a new one of these I've managed to salvage it it's not structural it's just trim so today I'm going to clean it up prepare it for putting back on first thing I do is clear out all the old holes and make them round again so I'm taking the old sealant off that was put on 45 years ago. A semi-sharp chisel seems to do the job. You don't want it too sharp because it'll dig into the wood and gets most of it off, but it's a tedious process. Anyway, it's a lot quicker than shaping up a new piece of teak. Well, the underside of the cat rail, it's looking pretty ordinary at the moment, but I've got most of the sealant off. I think it'll clean up okay. That's the top. We shall see. There's some plugging to do and some sanding to do and some filling to do. Working out the back of the car today. Cutting out some little round plugs. You can buy them in a chandlery, but they will cost you a fortune. If you're doing a lot of teak work, invest in some plug cutters. You can get them in most carpentry stores. You just use a piece of scrap teak and Draw the plugs out, there's a plug, I think they charge about 30 cents each in Australia in the yacht chandlery, so these things cost about 30 bucks each. And if you buy really good quality ones like I did from the States, I can't remember the name of them, but they will stay sharp for years. I've had these for at least 10 years. It's better if you have a, have a drill press. These holes are where the Genoa track bolts went through and they're not going to be opened up again so I'm plugging them. These ones every six inches they are the holes for the screws that fit the cap rail down to the bulwark so I'm leaving them open. I'm going to glue these plugs in now and then I'll sand them all off. Very satisfying. I love bringing old bits of wood back to life. This would be Burmese teak, I expect. Every bit you save is another bit that doesn't have to be cut down. All right, so all my plugs are ready to glue in. This is Technoglue. It's a two parts to one, so that's the hardener and that's the epoxy glue. It's got some fillers in it, not much, just enough filler so it won't run. I basically use this for any gluing of timber. It's got a good life after it's been mixed in the tropics here everything goes off very quickly this stuff it gives you plenty of work in time best thing to do with any kind of epoxy as well once you've mixed it is spread it out it's got really good adhesion when i was gluing the laminex on i very seldom had to actually support the laminex even though it was gluing mainly on a vertical surface so it's good stuff all i do is just grab the plug which i fitted previously. Blow the dust out of the way, a generous amount of glue on there so it fills the gap around the plug. Give it a little spin and get the grain lined up with the grain and the thing you're gluing it into, a little gap over one side, I just fill that in. It doesn't matter if you splosh this stuff around it, it's all going to get sanded off after. It actually takes a surprising amount of glue to put these plugs in. If you've got good quality plug cutters. When you cut the plug, it puts a taper on the plug so it sort of wedges in. It's not too difficult to get them the right way up. Now there's a couple of cracks in this plank so I'm going to fill them with the same glue. They'll be visible but teak plank big enough to do this with is about $300. Here's a bit of a plug for our uh, dive shop in Mackay where we bought our snorkeling gear. Get it? Plug. Uh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> right, got all the plugs in. These are the holes that are being left. These are the ones I want to cut. Just going to repair these holes with the same glue. The proper fair dinkum chippy way to do it, chippy carpenter, whatever you want to call him, would be to put a graving piece 
in here, but this will do. This glue does shrink a little bit, so it always pays to just overfill. And that's it. Well, my glue's all dry, this is the next day. So I'm gonna chop these plugs off and give this a quick sand, and that'll be ready to put back on. So it's a lovely day down on the marina and today I'm going to be dry fitting the refurbished teak cap rail back onto the bulwark which has all been filled and sanded and I'm just dry fitting at this stage because we're going to be painting the inside of the deck here in the bulwark whilst we've got it all open. All right, this should fit straight back on as long as the width of the cat rail hasn't changed with any kind of expansion of the epoxy anything like that yeah that's on all the way i don't want this to fall in the water so i'm just gonna put a bit of a safety line on it it's wood so it would float then i'd have to wash all the salt off it i'm going to use one inch screws i think they're eight gauge they'll go into the bulwark into the epoxy about three quarters of an inch 18 mil and I think that'll do it. There's nothing structural about this. I think the next size up is an inch and a half, which is that one. And if I go an inch and a half, I've got two inches thick of epoxy in the bulwark. I just don't want to get too close to putting a hole right through it. If this started to work loose at some point, well, I can address that down the track, but I don't think it will. There's a uh, screw every six inches on this rail and they haven't worked loose before. So I guess they won't work loose now. Dry fitting this first section of refurbished tow rail meant we could be sure that nothing had changed both overall and at the scarf joint and that it was still a decent fit. Once that had been done, we could comfortably move to the next section of the rail, working our way systematically around the boat. After the starboard aft quarter was the transom, where we hoped the taff rail, as it used to be called, would come off in one piece. There are a lot of screws in this rail. It's taken me about an hour and a half to get all of these out. Some of them broke off, some of them came out. I'm ready to start levering this off. This section of rail is in lots of pieces. There's like one piece, two, three, another section, four sections. And the reason for that is because it's got a really tight curve in it. You'd have to have a really wide plank to get it out of one piece. So I really don't want to break well, I can break it, but I really want to be able to screw it back together again or glue it back together and not have to make a new one because it's quite a complex piece of um, tea. Then there was the aft port quarter, where it was important to remove more long lengths intact for a greater chance they could be refurbished rather than remade, which wasn't always the case. This is the section of cat rail which I new would have to be replaced with a new section it's about three meters long and i'm just going to get this bit off and it's coming off so easily there's been some pretty major damage here and so it was that bit by bit and piece by piece we got all of the tow rail off the boat and categorised into those sections that were able to be salvaged and those we could not, which leads us to the next step. This is my trusty hospital grade vibration saw, which I've had for about 35 years. That's a pretty perfect cut. I don't have to do anything to that. And that is the beauty of these things. You can cut dead straight line, a very good finish. Just a little bit of scorching there. That's ready to take a pattern off. All right, I'm gonna take a template now to transfer onto my pattern. Tighten this screw up a bit. I'll hold it in there. I'm just gonna mark it with this. And 
go. Right, now I'm going to make one of these for the other end and then I'm going to join them together with a strip of plywood. I've got three pieces to my pattern which I'm going to make into one piece with staples and screws. That's my guide. It's about 40 mil wide. I'm just going to trace the shape of this onto the underneath of this without it falling in. This is where I'll find out there's no staples in the stapler probably. Oh, lucky. This is my preferred method of making patterns. Plywood, staple together. If you want to be absolutely sure these aren't going to move, and I want to make sure because I'm cutting up like a $300 piece of teak to this shape, I'll put a couple of screws in here as well. Now I just get my pencil and draw the shape of the bulwark underneath. There we go, this is the slot that I've got to cut in the underneath of the cap rail. So I just know that I have to extend this, um, whatever it is, 10, 12 mil out. Probably do 12 mil and I can sand it to shape. So that's it. Now here's the old teak that I've restored. Here's the scarf joint, here's my pattern, that runs along. Here's the other end of the pattern, another scarf joint, put in there. And I can take this away and make my new cap rail. plywood pattern. I took a trace off of the bulwark. That's the width of the top of the bulwark. That's going to be a slot in the underside of the rail. And now I'm just extending half an inch each side of that slot. And that gives me the outer dimensions of the cap rail. Bits on the end here, the scarf joints. First of all I've got to cut the plywood pattern out. Then I'll transfer it onto my piece of teak. It's a pretty rough pattern. All that has to be accurate is three things really. The shape of the recess and the exact dimensions of the scarf joints and the distance between them. So as long as we get those things right, it'll fit. It's not rocket science as they say. So now I've made my plywood pattern and I've transferred its shape onto the piece of teak. Here's my marks, mark it up. I'm going to use my jigsaw. I'll just do a test cut first to make sure that it's uh, cutting vertically, not a big deal if it's not absolutely vertical, but uh, close enough to be good enough. So this is what I'm actually making. I'm making one of these. This is the original cap rail from the transom, which I'm using. It's been repaired. It's not the prettiest of things, but it'll do. I'm up to the stage where I've got to cut out the recess in the bottom of the rail. Now, it's got a curve in it. So I'll show you how I do that. So this is my setup, my router table. Pretty simple, piece of half inch plywood, router bolted up underneath. Vacuum cleaner attached to the router. Routing makes a lot of dust, so all that gets sucked away. This is just a small copy router, doesn't matter. 
do the job. Here's my guide, which just gets moved as we cut the slot wider and wider. I've just done two passes here, back to a third one. This is gonna be a 40 mil wide slot. And I basically use the edge of the cap rail to put up against the guide, which is just screwed in the top there. I've got a couple of little screws down this end. This just stops the plank wobbling from side to side too much as I'm pushing it through. There's another one there. We've got a few more cuts to do, and the slot on the underneath, which seems like a difficult thing to do. It's not difficult at all once you know how to do it. So I've finished cutting the slot according to my template. It should fit in all places. If not, it can be eased out wherever it's tight. Here's my template, so I can directly relate the measurements that I've taken off of the actual bulwark straight to the slot. It varies a bit, as you would expect, but that's fine, because that's what the bulwark does. So I've just followed what's there, really. So now what I've got to do is um, change this bit for a rounding off bit they call it now that's a half inch radius and the one inch cap rail will be a fully rounded bull nose i've set this low so i can just chew away at it bit by bit i don't want to uh, really grab the teeth or chip any off finished the rounding off as you can see i've got my rebate here that fits over the bulwark and everything else has a half inch radius on it I've just cut out one of the scarfs at one end, just about to do the other. I marked it already before I did the rounding off. Before I cut it, I'll just get my template again. You can uh, never check these things too often. Yep, that's all good. I'm gonna cut this with a jigsaw. Whenever you do a cut, you can do a pencil line, but then it's a good idea to go over it with a craft knife. Makes it easy to sand back to. What I'm doing now is drilling the screw holes for screwing it down to the top of the bulwark. I've got a screw every six inches. They stagger. This one is just offset from the sensor line here. The next one is offset the other side. The other thing that I'm doing is not drilling the screws straight down. I'm drilling them in at an angle for two reasons. One is it gets the screw away from the fiberglass deck when it comes in the other way, getting the screws away from the side of the hull. Also, if you've got your screws splayed in with one that way, next one that way, and so on, for the plank to actually pull straight up, it's got to bend the screws. Whereas if the screw goes straight down, all it's got to do is strip out the thread. So it just gives that, that extra element of strength. As you know by now, if you've been watching this channel for a while, I'm a big fan of jigs. These staggered screws that I've just been talking about, well, I've made a little jig of a scrap piece of timber. Screw on each side, which just locates over the rail. I know that when I drill my hole here, I drill through this hole, and I move it along to my next six inch spacing. I do the opposite one, move it down. It just avoids making mistakes, he said. I've drilled all my screw holes and I'm going to set in the countersinks and this piece will be ready to take it down to the boat and test fit it. Here's the piece of teak I spent the last day and a bit making. I've done a little bit tweaking this morning, but it, it basically fits. See if I can put it on with one hand. Here you go. New teak, old teak. So there's my scarf joint there. Back down the other end. New teak, old teak. There's a fair bit of wood to be removed here. This is because this old teak has been sanded so many times over 45 years, every time someone's revarnished it. So it's a bit lower than the one inch thick, which was standard, I think, and what it would have been designed with. So what I'm about to do now is screw this on. So with that piece put in, our cap rails are complete again, on this side anyway. Back at the ranch, there were plenty more pieces to clean up 
starting with a belt sander and moving on to an orbital until the various cracks, splits and missing sections were exposed. Everything that could possibly be ground out and filled with the epoxy Techniglue received that treatment, which is how many more of the planks that had previously looked unsalvageable came to eventually be saved. This one has been glued, it's been held in place by a couple of screws on the bench that's to hold this part and this part level with each other across there, make sure nothing moves. And all I needed was a clamp to just pull it together there, so that's pretty much done. And I've just about got this pulled down as well. Got a screw there and a screw there which are holding this side in place. And I've got a block here which is wedging this piece. I've already filled this with epoxy glue from underneath. I'm just going to go along and push as much epoxy down these cracks as I can. And hopefully it won't come apart, it shouldn't. There was a lot of excess glue to sand off, and in fact a lot of sanding full stop, restoring bleached grey timbers to their former rich honey colour and blending in new teak plugs with the old wood. There were also many more holes to be drilled and countersunk, but eventually, after what seemed like an endless groundhog day, all the refurbished sections were ready to be test fitted back on the boat. The last pieces that had to be made from scratch were templated, cut out, shaped and blended in. And finally, we were ready to permanently reinstall an entire cap rail and seal it for good. Well, we're now getting to the pointy end of this job. All of these pieces of teak here have been sanded through the grates. What we're gonna do now before they go onto the boat is just give them a sealing coat. In that rebate, we're going to paint Everdure, which is a, an epoxy. That will just hopefully help to preserve the teak from any more moisture damage from the underside. We're also going to just paint one coat of the Sikkan Cetol varnish on before we go down to the boat. The sun's very fierce. It's just another time saver. We hope, fingers crossed. Anyway, let's get into it. So step one is the Everdure. Because it's quite liquid and will run through the screw holes, Julian's gone through and uh, temporarily plugged them. We've got this product here, in this case it's by Sika, same people who make Sika Flex. It's called Able Rod, comes in different thicknesses. This is six millimeters. In the building trade this is, when you've got a gap and you want to fill it with sealant, well, to avoid you just pumping tons of sealant in there, uh, you put this rod in. Anyway, we're not using it for that. I'm going to use it to block these little holes off. What you've got to do is squish it around a bit, push it through. I can feel that coming through the other side now. We've never tried this, by the way. We're just trying it now. And then it's blocked your hole. We're doing this because we don't want epoxy to go through. Epoxy, when you get it on timber, makes it go almost black. And we definitely don't want that happening here. It'll look horrible. So. Yeah, each one's going to be sealed with a little piece of bone rod. Step two is the first coat of varnish. Sick and Cetol, we're going on with this first and then our clear coat over the top. I'll explain more later, but anyway, let's get into it again. So here we are on a lovely summer's day and we're going to put this on permanently. Line it up, put a couple of screws in just to make sure we've got it in the right place and then we'll get our sealant out. The sealant's basically not really sealing it but it's just giving it something to bed on and making sure that we don't accumulate water underneath it because none of these screws that hold this on actually go into the boat, they just go into solid epoxy. So here we go. I'm just going to mark it here. You won't be able to see the screws because they'll be covered in sealant when this goes on. We just have to feel for them. So I have to make sure it's absolutely lined up. Right, it's going on. The sealant we're using for this and that we're using all over the boat is actually a Sika product, very good. And this is a building silicon. It's for roofs and gutters and you can get it in all different colors. It's lasted for a long time 
on everything that we've done so far, like years and years. So that's what we're going with. That's what 200 odd teak plugs looks like. I'm gonna mix up some epoxy and start putting them in before it rains again, hopefully. After 200 and odd plugs, I've got two left. And if you look up here, I've got one, two, three, five holes left to fill. I'm short and not enough time to go and drill some more. Oh well. Well, here we are in real time. Julian's chiselled the teak plugs down. They now need to be sanded flush with the rest of the rail. And we need to apply some varnish. You might remember from quite some time ago that we did a bit of an experiment with varnish. I happen to be sitting right next to some examples here. We tried going on with a clear coat alone and we also went on with some sickened sea tar which has a pigment in it and then the clear coat over the top. That's worked, that's about three years old now. So that's what we're going to do with the tow rail. The reason I'm not showing you that in its complete finished entirety is because the weather has not been very kind to us. It might look like a sunny day right now, but trust me, this has been the first one in a series of very rainy days, and there are more to come. This is a very brief window. So if there's one thing you can't do in the rain, it's varnish, but something you can do is go sailing. So that's what we're about to do. Thanks for watching. Cheers.